lesson today is on birds, and we're going to be doing a fun, unusual pattern bird from our imagination. And we want this bird to be unique like no other bird. We're going to be using lines, patterns, and imaginary colors. So start thinking about the colors that you want to use or the patterns that you might want to put in your bird today. The first thing to do is we're going to be going uh, toward the center of our page and this is just approximate and then we're going to just jump over toward the edge of the page a little bit more so it's not exactly right in the middle of the set the page and then I'm just going to jump up a little and I'm going to draw a circle this is going to be the iris so this is really pretty small look it's smaller than my fingernail right in here so I'm going to stick or almost the size of my fingernail but so that's how small it should be so I'm going to stick just a circle in here then I'm going to make a drawing around this. Now, if you want to use pencil first to draw this in, that's fine, or you can draw it straight to paint. I prefer straight to paint with the children. Just using your brush, use the tip of the brush, and draw right around the circle of the eyeball. So now I have a double circle on my bird. And this is just to add some emphasis to the eye. You can even continue and add more lines around this if you'd like as you go around. That's up to you. The next step is to go ahead and draw a number one. So I, I have my eye, I have the circle around it, it kind of looks like a donut. Then I'm going to do a number one right off next to the eye. From there, I'm going to go out straight. And this almost forms, look at that, a right angle. See this little angle in here? So when I have a straight line and then a line that comes across, that's a, almost a right angle. And then if I come out straight from this number one, and this should be equal distance here, so this is these two lines are almost parallel from each other right here. This is the parallel lines are equal distance from each other. So I'm coming out to start parallel. Now this is going to form my beak. Now the top of the beak is going to be bigger and longer than the bottom of the beak. And a lot of birds have that. So I'm going to come out like a toucan. And then from here, I'm going to gradually go down like it's sliding down a slide on the playground. Now, don't go way down too far because then it's going to be um, out of proportion with the top one. Now, if you notice, mine's a little crooked and dippy here. Usually it connects a little bit straighter. So if you make a mistake, just redraw your line. This kind of a mistake is easy to fix and it will be filled in once we paint. So that will be hidden because paint can hide paint mistakes. So then I continue my bottom beat, draw over, and I'm slowly going down and around to almost meet the tip of this. Now I didn't quite bring it down to here. It's almost meeting the tip. Now that is the beak area here. And you can divide the beak. Usually the top is bigger than the bottom. So I can come across and I can give it a little wiggly line or I can do it straight or a little bit of both. However you want to uh, divide the top and bottom beak area in. And you can put a little vent here. A little vent hole there. And now we're going to work on our body. I'm going to basically just draw around the eye shape that looks a lot like a donut and I'm not going to go completely around that because I want to keep this line opened but I'm going to just go once I've come around and met the eye and almost to the bottom of the eye I'm going to bring it right off the page here so kind of at the top of the eye I'm going to go right off the page and then I'm going to bring this and I'm heading toward my diagonal but I'm not quite going to go to the corner of my page down here. I'm going to jump over a little bit more. I kind of want this to feel like the curve, like an N curve right here. If I were to draw the letter N, you see that, that curve? It's up and down. Or just like the letter U. So you can check your work. Always you keep on assessing. What does it look like? How can I check it? Well, turn the paper upside down. Does this look like the letter U? Okay, you can assess your work to see if it's correct. If it looks like the letter U to you, then you did it correctly. If it's too wide, then just fix it. Redraw the line here. 
Say I've made a mistake and it's way over here. I can always turn this into something else later on. Just draw it correctly and then continue. Once you have the basic body and beak done, you can go ahead and fill in with lines and patterns. Uh, choose any line or pattern you'd like and fill in the body. Any mistakes, you notice some brush mistakes here, all of this can just be incorporated into my lines and patterns. Now one thing you want to do when you make line and pattern is you want to be consistent. So if my line and pattern is like this, I don't want to continue and make something else here and something else here. I want it to be the same as I go through the whole page. So if you look here, the body I did consistent. It is the same throughout the whole thing. This shows unity in our painting. So you want to have unity where it makes it look like it's this part of the same body. All the same design. You don't want it to be too crazy if you continued with other pattern. Now around my eye this has some feather design and feather pattern you know that's okay because it kind of mimics these curves here this just gets smaller this kind of patterning here so it's still the same colors same pattern but just getting smaller and that's okay that continues and keeps unity in the picture so you want to continue with all your patterning and once you've done that you can fill in your beak and you can do different values of color. I outlined it in a purple, so I'm going to use some light purple for my to fill in with. And so I'm just going to fill in the beak quick. And then I'll let that dry. And I can even go back and add some other values to color on top later. If you paint it thin enough, sometimes you can do it right away. But it's always best to let it, let it dry a little. See, this isn't really holding my paint here. So if you let that dry, it's best. Um, then go ahead and design your background. Think of some really cool patterns, flowers. Um, I'm just going to choose a, a lighter value than what I've chosen in my bird so that the, the background doesn't stand out. I want my bird to stand out. So I'm using this really cool lime green and I'm going to draw a bunch of just lines randomly and this will become some uh, fern or palm tree lines. So I'm randomly placing several lines and then I'm just going to fill in with the some fern or palm tree leaf branches. Just kind of a fern or a, a ginger type. And I'm taking my brush, I'm going smaller at the top and getting small, 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 small. These are all small presses and lines. I'm just brush, taking my brush and pressing, take my brush press, and then get longer, longer, longer strokes. The smaller is the new growth, and then it slowly gets longer as I go down. And I'm just filling in the background of my imaginary bird in the jungle. You can even add other, you know, another value to this. On this page here, what I did was I added, um, you know, some pressing polka dots on top, kind of pressing lines coming through. And the thing is just to have fun filling in and using your imagination.